Hello, hello, and welcome to designing an object in 3D and then printing it so that you can make something in reality. To begin this workshop or class tutorial, go ahead and go to tinkercad.com. You can see the URL up here in my menu bar. And once you get there, go over to the sign up button and click sign up click uh, create personal account and click sign up with email go ahead and go through the process here so you'll put in uh, you know I'm just gonna put in a fake day and uh, put in a year and hit next and then you use your KSU email address so in my case, I'll just put something in here. Okay, and then I have to make a password and I'll just let it suggest a password for me. Fine. And then I'll hit create account. Okay, so it created an account. I don't want the marketing and I hit done. Okay, we have successfully logged in at this point and you can see that we have a button over here. We can click the plus create button. That's one place you can get into designing your first object. Or in the 3D design section over here, we can click on create your first 3D design. I do want to point out that they have a couple of tutorials here also. And you'll see there's a tutorials and challenges option where you can learn more skills. Feel free to come back to those later. We're going ahead and moving forward, but you have these available to you in your account. So click on create your first 3D design and it will bring you over into the main workspace. I'm gonna close this little tip. There are lots of these little tips. They can help you. But now that we've arrived, I can go ahead and start designing. The first thing I want you to pay attention to, and I'm going to go ahead and move our works, workspace up a little because we don't really need quite all of the URL and such, uh, is that you might as well rename whatever you're going to do. So I can put my initials and I can say brand object up here. There I am. Uh, so now I've named my object with my initials. That'll be easy for tracking. Second of all, I want you to get comfortable with this work plane. The work plane is, roughly speaking, equivalent to what we were doing thinking about the print area of the printers. The printers have a square plate and they put the filament down on that plate. So this big grid that we're looking at in blue here is that space where the printer is going to print and we can navigate around it so in the left there's this cube that says top front and notice if i dr click and drag this to upwards it rotates the work plane i can click it to the side or the other side now getting comfortable navigating this plane is the first thing you should do and if you're ever lost so if i flip it upside down i don't know where i am i can click the home button and it will snap right back to the original geometry and that's super helpful. I can also zoom in, I can zoom out. So there are some things I can do to actually switch different views. So get comfortable with that and remember you can always click the home button. To get started with designing what you're going to do is you're going to start out thinking about what we're going to create. The basic idea here is we want to create a keychain that expresses your brand identity and we're going to make it pretty quick. We want it to be able to print within a short amount of time because we're going to ask everybody in IS2200 to do it, which means thousands of these go through the lab every semester. So we've designed it to be a on the small side and to get through basic skills that you'll need to understand while being printable. Printable means we need our objects on the work plane. So when you drag something in by default, it will stick to the work plane. And notice there's a tip in the bottom left as I drag this in, I'm holding the click as I drag it in, 
and in the lower left it says hold C to place shape on the work plane. Well by default it's going to hook to the work plane but I can click C2 and I did. And now I have a cube so I just went over to the shapes palette, dragged in this cube, I'm trying to make a keychain and certainly if I make this big cube and put it in my pocket it's going to be painful because it has all these corners it's not flat it won't sit nicely so I need to make it flatter now what happens and I'm gonna use because I'm on a trackpad I can actually zoom in by just uh, pinching and expanding my two fingers and then I can use two finger click to rotate but I could have done all that with this menu on the left too and you can use a mouse to do some of these things you'll notice there are these four anchor points there's four down on the plane those control the X and Y, the width and the depth of the model. And then there's one up here that controls the height, which is the Z value of the model. And it's this Z value I want to edit first. So notice it's telling me in millimeters that I've got 20 by 20 millimeters and I've got 20 millimeters tall. If I click and activate this top height point, so if I click it and then I come down here, I can say, you know what? I really only want four millimeters tall. And if I just type that in and hit return, it flattens. And now the object is gonna sit in my pocket a lot better. I want it wider because this is a little less than an inch. So an inch is about 25 millimeters, which means I probably want it to be about 60 millimeters wide. So I'm gonna put on here, I don't know, 40 something like that 50 you could make your own choice and now I've made it wider so this box that I put originally is now a rectangle and you'll notice that it's fairly flat but it still has these sharp corners and I want to make those softer I want to round them out so that they don't poke me if I put my keychain in my pocket the way I'm going to do that is through an important concept, which is adding shapes and merging them. And this is how 3D design can work additively. So over here, I've got this cylinder. And notice I can drag the cylinder in, and it tells me again I can hold C. So I'm going to click C, and notice it puts it down lower. And I'm looking at the bottom edge of this cylinder to make sure that it is lining up size-wise with my rectangle. I'm going to let go. Now if I get the upper view, so if I change this to a flat view like that, and I look up, I see that my cylinder really does align with my rectangle. That's good. Now if I rotate it, I can see that it's too tall because it's 20 millimeters. I remember that I had four millimeters of height before. So if I pr press the four in there, I select the height anchor point, and then I put a four in and hit return, it shrinks it down. And now I've got these two she shapes and they overlap. The printer can't print that because of the overlap. It has to see one shape. We're going to print this all in one filament. So I need to take these two, and this is an important concept, I need to hit group. I've now created one shape out of two shapes. Now it turns out I also want to round the other side. And it would be convenient if I could just reuse the shape I just made out of that cylinder. So I'm going to ungroup my shapes for a minute. I'm going to grab this one. And notice I can actually copy up here. So I can copy, I can come over, and I can hit paste. And I have a second cylinder now. I'm going to use the arrow keys and I'm going to click left because I don't want to have to deal with moving up and down. I just want left movement, which is a little tough on the mouse or the trackpad, but the arrow key will get it just right. And I have my duplicate cylinder. And now I'm going to hold the shift key and I'm going to select my rectangle and I'm still holding the shift key. I'm going to click the other rectangle and guess what? Now I'm going to click group again and I could hit control G or I can just click 
and I have created a single shape that will be rounded in my pocket. It won't poke me and it is about the right size for a keychain. Now I run into another problem. I actually want a hole in here in order to put the key ring through and attach my keychain to my keys. So I can choose a cylinder tool and we're going to learn our next main concept which is cutting. So when you do 3D designs you can cut shapes with other shapes. Now in Tinkercad this becomes super clear because when you click on something in Tinkercad and you drag it in, so I'm going to center it right over here. I'm going to hold the C option again because I want it to go all the way down to the work plane and I'm going to click. Notice in the cylinder options it says hole or solid. Now I could have actually drawn one that came straight as a hole to begin with but it doesn't matter. It's the same effect so I can click hole and I can now edit this thing and I can say you know what I want five millimeters by five millimeters and I'll hit return. Now I'm going to use my arrow keys and I'm going to navigate this around a little bit I'm going to rotate this a little so I can see overhead looks like it's kind of centered to the left probably good about right there I have created what's called a cutting shape. This is negative space. When I group this with my solid shape, it's going to cut out that hole. Now I want to make sure that this thing actually goes all the way through. So I haven't talked about this little cone at the top of every shape, but this allows me to adjust the space vertically in which my shape exists. So if I click here I can actually use it to push my shape so that for sure when I cut it's going to cut that hole all the way through the shape. And when I look at the work plane I see that my shape is still on the work plane. That's good because the printer can only print from the work plane up so it needs to be touching. And guess what? Now I'm gonna click shift. So if I select this my lozenge that I made, the, the fill, filled shape, and then I hit shift and I click on my cutting cylinder, and now I hit group, you'll notice, what did it do? It cut a hole through my orange solid shape. Perfect. So that's going to work for me to be able to build my, my uh, there we go, so my key ring is starting to take shape, I can see, and it looks like I can start to build in a little more personalization. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come over and grab some text. I will drag it over, and in this case I want it to stick on top of the piece that I'm making. and so. I'm going to allow it. I'm not going to hit C this time. I'm just going to click there. And now my text is sticking right to the top of my existing shape. I'm going to change this over to whatever I want. In this case, I'm going to make it the text is going to be my initials. So I can just click over here and type in. And now it's a little too big, so I can just drag it down a little. I can move it over. I can take another look. I'm just rotating down. I'm, oh, it looks way too tall. So what do I do? I can just drag it down two millimeters, usually plenty high for text like that, and it won't be too bad in my pocket. And it looks like everything is joined. It's a little too low, so I'll just move it up a little. And I could change this. Let's say I was making a toy for a child or I'm making a, a brand logo item to hand out from my lab. So the 3D lab is part of the Mad Lab on the fourth floor of the Burris building. So I could make a little item like this that could be handed out to people. There we go. Okay, pretty good. And now I've created this keychain that I can hand out and I have to, of course, come over here and with these two items I have to group the letters with 
the main object. Keep in mind that the colors you see in the design here will not carry through to the printers. The printers have a limited number of colors, and so whatever you do here is going to actually be useful for you just to look at, but whatever the color of the filament is on the printer is what you're going to end up getting. Now I can click export over here, and I can actually export these to an STL file. That's what we recommend. This is a stereo lithography file. So if I click there, it's going to take my object and it's going to, you'll notice it says preparing model for export. Once it's done, I will have the item ready to take to the next step, which is slicing. So we'll just wait a second. Hopefully get our model. You'll notice too while we're waiting that there are a lot of other shapes. We can actually import pictures and turn them into things. So there's a lot of options. I just got my file. So now I'm going to take this file and I'm going to go slice it. Okay, now that we have a file ready for printing from the design standpoint, we have to prepare it for the printer, and this process is called slicing. We have to slice files because the printer is going to build from the build plate, and it's going to put layers of plastic from there up. So those layers are slices of the model. And the printer knows for a specific printer exactly how thick that plastic has to be. So we're going to need special software for that. And that software is located in 3D Printer OS. So right now you need to go to this URL, cloud.3dprinteros.com. I had it on the slide before. When you get here, you're clicking on SSO, which means single sign-on. And then you're going to search for Kennesaw State University. So I type it in here and I click Kennesaw State University. If you're already logged in to your Microsoft 365 or a related account, it's just going to bring you straight in here. So it just brought me straight into my master account for 3D Printer OS. Now I'm an admin, so I see a lot of stuff here. You can see a lot of pieces uh, that you may not actually see otherwise in your account. So I'm going to switch over. I've logged into a student level account over here in Chrome. And this is more what you should see when you log in. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click Add Files. And then I'm going to click Select from Computer. I'm going to go into my downloads where I already downloaded that STL file. And I will take a look over here and let's see if I can get the date added today. Here's my object, so brand object, STL. I'm uploading it. Now you'll notice it gives me the option to slice, but before I slice, I actually need to add printers. So that's the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go over to the printers tab. And you'll notice that I don't have any printers. I need to click over here and choose Add Workgroup Printers. So I'm not going to manually add a printer. I'm going to add workgroup printers. And this is actually the point at which you get your credit, your money credit for being able to print, as well as your access to send files through the cloud to the printers in the lab. So you got to get through this step. So you click Add Workgroup Printers, and then right here is where you're going to enter the access code given to you by either your uh, workshop leader or your faculty member. But you need to go ahead and do that and click to connect to Workgroup. So go ahead and do that now. And you'll notice that as soon as I collect, clicked it, I saw these printers show up. You may not see them show up immediately and sometimes they put a little note here that says you may have to wait 
up to four minutes. And sometimes you actually need to hit the refresh button or you need to log out and log back in to make the printers appear. But this time it all worked. I can see that I have access to the Ultimaker S3 printers in the Burris Building Room 465, which is the 3D lab in the Burris Building, and that there are six of them I have access to. So one, two, three, four, five, six. These have cameras, so I can actually click over here, and when I do that, it will try to connect to the printer, and it shows me that this particular one is empty, and it looks like it's undergoing some maintenance right now because I see this is open. But in general, that allows me to see what's going on with the printers, and it will actually take pictures for me of the results when I'm done printing, which is cool. But now that I have printers, I can go ahead and go back to files over here, and I can choose to slice. Now, I'm going to go ahead and just choose the very top slicer here, and since I have it, I'll choose slicer 5. It automatically detects that I'm going to send my print to an Ultimaker S3 type printer. There are many types of 3D printers. In our lab, we have a few different ones. Notice that it says My Printers Ultimaker S3. So it tries to help us out. The other thing is, it is automatically picking up this slicing profile. So we've set some default settings to make this easy for you so that you can be more successful. We already know the print core. We know that we're printing with PLA, which is polylactic acid. It's a type of plastic made from corn that doesn't throw off fumes that are dangerous. I can see my model here. It looks right to me. You know, it has the, it says Mad Lab. It's rounded. It's exactly what we designed. I don't really need to mess with any of these settings. I could turn off generate support. Support happens when you have overhangs with a model. So if the build plate is here and I, my model reaches out like this, remember warm plastic is going to slump down. It's going to be soft. And to stop that from happening, this slicing software will generate extra pieces to hold it up. Those are called supports. Your model shouldn't have any of those at this first opportunity where you're building your first model. If you get more advanced, you're going to run into these types of issues and you're going to have to learn how to do more advanced support generation. You're going to have to learn more about slicing because those different types of supports can be hard to clean off the model. They can cause it to break. So those are more advanced topics. We're not going to worry about that right now. I'm just going to click Slice. I turned off the Generate Support, and I'll hit Slice. And you'll notice it takes me right back to the other interface for projects. I now see that I have my STL file and the Slice button, but coupled with it under the Brand Object folder is this G code or geometric code file and I can see some details. It'll take 41 minutes to print. It's 5.39 grams of filament and at this point I can go ahead and click print and I can choose a printer so I'll go ahead and choose the Ultimaker S1 and ideally I want to go ahead and put my name in in the note. If I'm an online student I need to mention that because we can actually mail to you. There's an online form you need to fill out in order to make that happen. You'll see that in the instructions. There's an extra link there. We only mail things within certain flat specifications. So all of these brand objects have told you to make it, you know, four millimeters tall with two millimeter letters. Pretty much if we can fit it in a fairly small envelope, we will do that. We will do that for you and mail it for free. And I only have the option to queue to the printer. So I'm just going to queue it to the Ultimaker S1, uh, S3 number one. And I've selected it, one copy, I'll hit queue. And my job has been sent to the queue. I can see that it tells me I can go to printers. I can see that my job is here. 
and that it is going to get printed and as that happens I can actually watch it happen once the queue is released. Now I can go over here and choose BB465 and search on my admin account I can find that printer I can see that the print is waiting and I can go ahead and hit start so a lab assistant will do that and manage the queue notice it's downloading the file over here to the printer once the file is at the printer you will get an email telling you that it is coming on my side I now see that it's starting to print and we will soon see the bed and the extruder start to warm up and right now you can see that the bed is warming up pretty soon after that the extruder will warm up the bed has to be a certain temperature in order to get the plastic to stick to it while it's printing and the extruder has to be a certain temperature in order to ensure that the filament melts to the right amount so that it won't get all runny it won't burn but it will be soft enough to push through the little nozzle and put the next layer down on the bed. So you can actually watch the whole process of printing. It is uh, available to you through the uh, video button. And uh, then when you're done, I think it will create a little time-lapse video for you that you can use also. And then you come to the 3D lab during office hours or your faculty member can off open it up afterward or so can other faculty members and certain club leaders and you'll find your print on the table sitting there. If you're an online student and you've requested we mail it, we can mail it to you and that will take four to six weeks typically. Somewhere in there, we try to get them out faster, but somewhere in there we'll get it to you and then you'll have your print. So congratulations and now that you have the account, you understand the process, you are welcome to design further items. You do have credit in your account. Uh, some classes further up in the entrepreneurship and the marketing and IS fields have 3D printing as options or projects. So do be aware that you now have the cap capacity to prototype and build things. The lab has additional components for building electronic devices and such as well. So keep that in mind too. Thanks for watching.